If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. So Lacaga Police Chief Kelly Johnson joins us this morning for a few minutes. And uh, Chief, good morning and happy new year to you, sir. Good morning, Jimmy. Happy new year. Uh, Yesterday was National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day across the country, and we certainly appreciate our law enforcement uh, here in our coverage area across the state of Alabama on Charter Network or Charter Cable, and uh, specifically our Silicon Police Department uh, led by Kelly Johnson. And, uh, of course, uh, the holidays always a busy time. I did note uh, that uh, one, of the, one of the people that we're looking for, uh, a person who supposedly stole a, a purse from a lady out at Walmart. I know her pictures or his pictures everywhere now. Uh, I know you were on vacation, but anything on that? Has that guy been arrested or anything you know uh, of? We haven't gotten uh, sufficient leads to make an arrest yet, but you know we've got the word out there. We've got the picture out, and hopefully something will come to us. You know, that is, you know, the day before Christmas. Come on, man. Yeah, it, it happens. It happens. uh Pretty regular, but now the day before Christmas is uh, is quite. It's a little worse, but uh, one of, one of the things is is that you know, you turn your back in Walmart, you need to have your purse, your your personal belongings secured, and and that's one thing that that we take for granted, and we don't do all the time. But uh, like I say, it it happens, and uh, we hope to make an arrest in this soon if if we can get cooperation and and get somebody from the public to maybe give us a name. You know, social media, but it's out there, and, and you can't hardly hide any longer. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's the quickest way to get the information out nowadays. Uh, you know, you talk about the community cooperating, and, and you see it all across the nation. Sometimes people are just mum. They won't talk, and they know something. That's right. Yeah, you. we hope that our relationship with the community is good enough to... to warrant getting us information, mm -hmm. giving us information. Uh, we pounded in our officers to be good to the, to the people because we can't do our job without them. Yeah. We, have, we have to have their cooperation so that we can solve the cases that, that come before us. Uh, I saw just this morning, and I was mentioning it to Kelly right before we came on, three instances just yesterday of uh, officers being shot, one in Louisiana, one in Texas, I think it was, and another somewhere else. And, uh, you know, things have changed so much down through the years. Everybody seemed to have guns. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know that more people have guns. Uh, you know, there's, there's the big debate in Congress now with uh, uh, gun rights or, or uh, the, the maybe strict, mm -hmm. making stronger mm -hmm. the uh, the way people get guns. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the the way I see it is, and the way a lot of other people see it is that, that it's not the gun that, that does the damage, it's the person. Yeah. We got to start with us, with the people, changing the people uh, that, that have the guns, and uh, I think we would curb a lot of the gun violence. Several homicides in 2018. Any update on any of these this morning? Uh, we've... We've got, uh, there's three. Uh, they're all prepared to go to grand jury. Now, when grand jury will meet, I don't know. Uh, we get notice on them a week or so before. Be sometime this year, probably. It'll, right? it'll be sometime this year. Uh, we've got, we're, we're waiting to see some evidence back from uh, forensics on a couple of them, but uh, they'll still be going to grand jury as soon as we get. You, you know, uh, Kelly, a lot of people watching this morning, uh, they may not know, but you can become frustrated because. You know, this is like molasses sometimes. Uh, yeah. Forensics, I mean, their backlog and everything else, it takes a lot of time to get the information to even have enough information to form a case to make an arrest. It does. And, and it's, it's very disheartening that it takes that long. It's not like it is on television. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not, not 48 hours, right? <laughs> it's not 48 hours. It's not uh, one hour for your Law & Order episode, so... It takes a while. Uh, forensic science is backed up, state and national. So, you know, we've got some stuff at a federal uh, forensic lab, hope, hoping that it'll come back quicker than the mm -hmm. state would. Now, yeah. I uh, saw the new signs about the regulations on trucking here in the area. Yes, sir. And we're trying to get the word out to the truckers and, and to the public 
Uh, we, want the, we want the truckers in our city. Uh, we know we can't do without it. They bring the, the uh, products to us, to our businesses, but we don't want the unnecessary truck traffic. And that unnecessary truck traffic is, uh, they're trucks that use our city streets as cut throughs to go from Highway 280 to 21 yeah. is what it turns out being. Yeah. Uh, it's taken us more than 20 years to get pavement on the roads and we want to keep it. So, it, you know, the, the truckers, they're used to doing it their way and just uh, uh, taking shortcuts and stuff. But uh, when you're in a city our size with the amount of monies that were spent on paving, you got to protect it. That's right. Yeah, we, you know, everybody in their business or in their job tries to cut, cut corners to make a, a little extra money. And uh, truck drivers are no, you know, they're, they're no different. Uh, we want them to know that that they need to stay on the state route, the truck route, until mm -hmm. they get to where they've got to make their delivery. Don't cut through Sylacauga City streets just to get to the other side of town. And the signs are very, very clear now. There's no question. The signs are clear. They're at every entrance to our inner city uh, that, that comes in. Under we, we went a little further. We, we went one step further this week, and we've gotten local delivery only signs put up underneath those. So uh, there was some confusion. Uh, some would say in the no truck traffic signs, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't want them to have the confusion. So they, they know now that they can make a, lo a local delivery here, uh, but just don't use our streets as a cut through. Uh, and, and again, social media comes into play because you know that social media can get the word out that there's teeth <laughs> in right. these laws. That's right. There are, uh, of course, uh, the driver's license is the lifeline of a trucker, mm -hmm. and uh, if with with citations that come if, if they're off the truck route. I'm not saying that every trucker that's off the truck route will get a citation. Uh, we want to get the word spread, whether it be by citation or by warnings. or uh, But but we want them to know that, that unless they're making a local delivery, just stay off the city streets. Right. Got some new vehicles coming this year. We do. Uh, we hope to have them in state by the end of this month. Uh, down in Montgomery, they'll come in. We'll get them dressed up with the lights and the uh, all the in, inside package dealing with lights and sirens. Uh, they'll come go from there to get our computer systems put in and from there they'll go to having the stripe package put on. What kind of window are you talking about you think? Uh, probably on the road in town mid-March mm -hmm. I think. What kind of boost will that be? Uh, it'll be a big boost to the officers that are on the uh, that are in the department. It'll be a big boost to the uh, the look of our department, because it'll be a totally different look. Mm -hmm. uh, there won't be the black and white chargers that we see on the road. Uh, I think it'll be a big boost to our city shop as well, because we have a lot of maintenance on the ones that we have now. Can you describe the vehicles and what type of vehicles they are? Sure. They're, they're 2019 Ford Explorers. We're going to have 10 of them come in, uh, hopefully all at the same time that we can we can put on the road. But solid black, they'll have a, uh, a black scheme to them as mm -hmm. well. It's called a ghost package, and and uh, be a nice, sharp, crisp look to the new to the new vehicles. That's fantastic. Now, are these leased vehicles? Are they bought or what? Well, we say leased, but it's uh, we're buying them by the year. Okay. We're, we're paying. We're pay, we're not coming out right and and forking the money out up front. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we used a local bank here. Uh, Got our loan through them. That's good. And we'll uh, we'll make the payments yearly. Fantastic. Now we're looking for a few officers too, are we not? We do. We have we have one police officer position, and we have an animal control officer, which is is listed as nuisance control on our website. All right. So, how do people apply, and what's the process? All right. The process is to come to City Hall, uh, go to the second floor of City Hall, and see our HR specialist, Miss Jay McGee. Uh, she'll walk you through the the process of getting the application. Mm -hmm. uh, we want applications turned in no later than January the 31st at 4 p.m. Uh, applications and resumes if, if you have one. This is a competitive business. This is a uh, very every, Everybody business. looking for uh, better packages and that kind of thing. And, and Sylacauga, no different. The, our city of Sylacauga must and, and are, are continuing to upgrade the, the uh, offerings that are, are available for new officers. Yeah. 
We have we have a really good package. The city offers a very good benefits package. Mm -hmm. uh, the you know you have a retirement system here. We're part of the retirement system of Alabama, and uh, we have competitive rates. We have competitive pay. Um, we uh, we we just we don't have the, and it's not just Sylacauga that has the problem. We don't have the uh, people that want to become police officers mm -hmm. much anymore. What does that change? You think? The I mean, atmosphere. When you're growing the, up, kids yeah. dream of being police officers. Well, it's just it's just the world today. The way things go on in public, uh, the lack of respect, whether it be the officers not gaining the respect, or it be the people not growing up and and learning respect. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a culmination of both, and it it takes that special person to to do it, to want to do it, and to do a good job for their community. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the person that we want. We don't we're we're not going to hire just any person to fill a, a position. Uh, you we just want, added a couple, right? Uh, I, I just had one come out of the police academy. Uh, I've got one in the police academy now, and I've got a new officer starting January the twenty first. All right. So that'll that'll leave us one short on officers, and my animal control position has been vacant for quite a while now due to injuries and uh, and and now vacancy. So we need a we need a good person, a good fit for that position as well. It's really highly unusual that you've almost got a full force because a lot of cities are, are clamoring with the numbers of officers they're looking for. Yeah, we're we're lucky right now. We're we're only one down uh, after the twenty first. We're two down right now, but after the twenty first, we'll be one down on the uh, certified law enforcement side. Um, a lot of cities are, are looking and scrambling to do a lot more than what we've mm -hmm. got to do. Yeah. So. Uh, we hear a lot, and you read a lot of stories and see a lot of video about body cameras. Yes. Uh, all of our officers have body cameras here, and how much do those things cost? Uh, body camera is going to run you around $500. Mm -hmm. The ones that we use are, are Axon body cameras. And $500 a piece well worth its well worth its cost uh, a body camera is is not so much for gathering evidence but is to protect the rights of the people and mm -hmm. is to protect the officer from uh, false complaints i have seen stories of where individuals or businesses say hey I want to help the police department. I want to donate for body cameras. Do people do that here, or can they, they do, do that here? They do. They, we we get donations all the time. Uh, we have we have a contributions account in the general fund, and uh, people donate for different things. We we just we had the business owners and personal uh, people in the community donated for our rifles a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. So we take donations. Uh, any if if you want to contribute uh, check could be payable to the Sylacauga Police Department and uh, it'll go to our contributions account if you want to uh, designate it for a certain thing mm -hmm. you just write it in the comment mm -hmm. section we're talking with uh, Sylacauga Police Chief Kelly Johnson before we go this morning talk about a couple of your uh, surrounding people who help you every day Ooh, we get we get help from from a lot of people every day uh, the media is, is a great the help assistant for us. chief and, and that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. Who, yeah. who are they? Now, my assistant chief is Captain Rondell Muse. Uh, he's been with the department for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, started his career in law enforcement with under Jerry Studdard with the Sheriff's Department here. Uh, Sergeant Landers, Donnie Landers. Uh, all my sergeants. Um, he's been here forever. Donnie right? Landers has, has got his retirement in, yeah. so now he's, you know, he's... Uh, He's on the downhill is what we You know, you, you, you talk about these guys like Muse and, and, and Landers. They're so well known in their community and, and people know them and, and they'll talk to them where they may not talk to you. Sure. Yeah, Don, Donnie, uh, Jason McNeil, he's our lieutenant on day shift. Uh, Mike Moore on night shift. They all have the, they all, and, and we all, as a law enforcement officer, you, you get people that trust you. You get mm -hmm. people that, that feel comfortable talking to you. And people go to that person and, and give them information. And it's like I said in the beginning, we can't do our job without the public's help. It, it takes people talking to us and it takes people giving us the information that we need to make the cases. Finally, this morning as police chief, what drives you? 
Uh, I, I, I hope that I make a difference uh, in not just the people that I, I serve, but the people that are coming up under me. Uh, I won't be here forever, so I won't, we want to try to mold some of the younger officers to grow and, and enjoy the job well enough to, to come up and, and start doing their part in uh, leading the department. Mm. So my drive is, is to make it better for the people of Sylacauga, to make our city better, and uh, also to help mold the up-and-coming officers. I guess a final thought as we leave this morning, uh, we need more sets of eyes watching. We do. Uh, the, I've got them. Uh, yeah, you the, know, those watching have got them. Just kind of pay attention. The uh, it, there's you know there's a, a a joke that goes around most of the time. Our you know we're our nuisance control officers vacant, but we we get more calls about animal control <laughs> than we do people breaking into homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's it's kind of a shame that that people that see stuff out there are more. Uh, likely to call on a dog than someone breaking into their neighbor's home. So we'd love to have the the community's help in getting us the information. If you see something, say something, and uh, call us anytime. If if even if the call is not something that we need to be, you don't think we need to be called about. Call us and let us check it out. It could be. Yeah. Chief, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Silicon Police Chief Kelly Johnson, our guest this morning on Daybreak. Uh, more right after this.